Hello, my name is Summer with Summerly Design Co. and I design sock knitting patterns. In today's video, I want to walk you through 10 different color combinations that you can use in your knitting projects. Whether you're knitting socks, shawls, sweaters, hats, you name it, these color combinations will work for a variety of projects. Um, I'm also going to give you some tips and tricks that I use as a designer when I'm selecting my colors. Um, I know for some of us, this can be a challenging part of the project process, right? Like you're so excited to cast on a new project, you start digging through your stash or looking online or going to your favorite yarn store, trying to assemble colors that you think are going to work for this pattern. And then the doubt creeps in <laughs> and you, you gravitate towards certain colors and then you're like, oh, but did these really look good together? What if I'm wrong? What if I don't have any taste? What if these look terrible? And of course we're investing time, we're investing money in these projects. And so when that doubt creeps in, it can be really frustrating and hard to even continue. And sometimes, at least for me in the past, I would gravitate towards safer options, a lot of grays and oatmeals and neutrals, um, instead of really going for it with color. And one of the wonderful things about sock knitting that I love about it is that it really allows you to experiment with color because unlike a sweater <laughs> or a shawl, it's not as big of an investment of time and money. You're not wearing it front and center on your body. Socks can be hidden by your pants. So I feel like socks are a really good way to experiment with color. And I have knit a lot of socks over the last four years. So I've experimented with a lot of different color palettes. And the 10 that I'm going to show you today are some of my favorites. So I'll show you those color combinations and then give you some of my tips and tricks to help you feel more confident when you go to select color palettes for your own project. So let's get to it. Before we kick things off with my favorite combinations, I just want to let you know that you're going to be able to find a lot of information in the description of the video. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different socks and a lot of different yarns. So if there's anything that grabs your eye, chances are you're going to be able to find information about that pattern or that yarn in the description. So without further ado, let's get into it. I love talking about color, so I'm so excited to do this video. My very first combination that I would recommend is pick any neutral and any neon and throw them together. I think neons and neutrals look so pretty together. Lobby and me did a whole book about it. <laughs> so it's a popular combination and for good reason. And it's a really easy one to do because you can find neons in all range of prices. Um, the neon I have here is Coats & Co Fiber. This is an indie dyed yarn. Um, but you can also find Lang Jawal does neons and Pick Stroll does neons as well. Um, so this particular, this is um, from my In Bloom sock set. It's a lace sock set. And I just have a really nice kind of grayish cream here with a hot pink toe. This is the Broken Rope Socks from the Hello Sailor sock set. And we've just got a nice gray by Lang mixed with a neon orange pinstripe. And then this little basic vanilla sock. This is actually one of the vanilla recipes from my book, The Sock Project. Um, I'll have pre-order information for that book below as well. But I mix that with a really nice poppy neon yellow with this beige yarn. So you can't go wrong by taking any neutral yarn and adding a neon pop to it. For my second color combination recommendation, we're gonna stick with the neon because I've already got it out, but this also happens to be another one of my favorite combinations to use. And I've used it a couple of different times. And that is a really great warm peachy pink with a really bright hot neon pink. It's a fantastic combination. It looks really striking. It's just really pretty. It's really modern. It's really cool. Um, and you can get it at different price points. This is Coats & Co Fiber, and this is Indie Dyed Yarn. But then you can also achieve the same look with Knit Pick Stroll. This is Pucker. This is Dogwood Heather. So again, really great combination that's easy to find no matter what your budget is, and it just looks fantastic together. These are my wide rib socks from the Wide Rib Sock Set, and then this is the Folk Flower Socks. And I've used it 
stripes in both occasions here, but it would look great just as a basic sock knit up in the peachy pink with hot pink heels, cuffs, toes. Um, you could also do lace. You could do cables. You could do texture. This color combination would work well in pretty much any situation. For my third color combination recommendation, we're actually going to build on what we've already got started here. And this is one of my tips when you're choosing a color palette. If you've already got two colors that you know you like, then you can add a third. You can build on what you've already got and add a third, either for interest or because you need a third color. And so for this particular combination, my beautiful peachy pink with my hot pink, I'm going to add in brown. And the result is really, really striking, really, really pretty. Um, just by simply adding this really pretty deep kind of nutmeg brown. Um, especially <laughs> if you're working with bright neon colors and you're like, love those colors, but that's a little bit bright for kind of what I had in mind. Um, brown is a very serious color. <laughs> so it, it adds some levity to your, to your design. It adds some levity to your project by just adding that kind of pop of brown. And I also just think it looks really beautiful. I don't, it's so funny because to me, so much of this is intuition for me. I just go off what looks right to my eye, what feels right to me. And for whatever reason, brown mixed with these uh, hot pinks and pale pinks just feels right. It looks good. I've used it here in my slip rib socks. This is just a really cool rib slip stitch pattern. Um, again, with the stripes, I knit a lot of stripes. I love stripes, but you don't have to do this in stripes. You can add brown to the heel. You could have a pink lace sock with a hot pink cuff, hot pink toe, and then add brown to the heel if you wanted to, just however you want to combine it. But, you know, trying to find a third color that you think looks really good with the two you've started with. And if you're in your local yarn store, you know, you can kind of pull skeins out, arrange them, kind of see what looks good to your eye. You can do it with your stash at home. If you're shopping online, another tip that I have is to screenshot colors that you like, that you're interested in, then you can pull up your photo album and you can see how they look next to one another. I do that all the time and it's a really great little trick um, to be able to shop online but still compare and see how the colors are actually working with one another. So that would be another one of my tips um, if you're trying to build color palettes. But definitely start with two that you like that you know look good and then start experimenting by adding in a third color other colors that you're drawn to see how they look next to each other and you might find some really cool surprising fun combinations for my fourth color combination recommendation we're going to move away from pinks for a minute i will be back because i love pink and i use it a lot but for this one we're going to focus on blues i really really love working with blues and this combination Blue and yellow, always great, always looks really good together. If you look at a color wheel, actually, I mean, there's theory behind this. You have your cool colors, you have your warm colors. And whenever you combine a cool color with a warm color, it usually creates a really pleasing color combination. Um, and if you're looking at opposites on a color wheel, yellow is opposite the blue. So, you know, um, you can use a color wheel if it makes you feel more comfortable. I tend to go by intuition. I just go with what feels right, looks right to my eye. But if you really kind of want to get scientific about it, that's another tip I have for you. You can buy a color wheel on Amazon and you can kind of use theory to guide your choices. If you're a little bit unsure and you're not sure what your own personal aesthetic is yet. It can kind of take a while to find that. I'm 43 and I feel like I'm just now sort of figuring out what I really love and what I don't. All right, for my fifth combination, I had to take off my sweater so I could show you this one. It's one of my favorites. And that is mixing a really beautiful deep teal with a chartreuse. And you can see it here in the stripe pattern in the sleeve of my sweater. It just looks so beautiful. It's so striking. These two colors together are just absolutely stunning. Um, again, if you look at your color wheel, this is this would be our cool color. This would be our warm color. They would be opposite each other on the color wheel. Um, I don't use color wheels though, just a reminder. <laughs> I just go with what feels good to me and these. I just absolutely love these two together. And if we're going to talk about building, I talked about that earlier when you start with two colors and you add in a third to build upon it. Um, let's go ahead and add in this mint. I'm just going to get that sweater out of our way. This mint looks absolutely fantastic with these three colors. So if you need a third color, add in mint. 
And look at that gorgeous, gorgeous combination. I, I have to knit something out of this. I know that I'm going to be doing a sock very soon out of these three colors because I think they look so beautiful together. Um, really, really love these colors. So that would be my next color combination. Add the mint, build on what you've already got with the chartreuse and the teal and throw in this beautiful soft mint. And again, another tip would be to look for contrast. If I threw this into black and white, um, you'd really be able to see how this will show up really dark. This will show up as a mid-tone. This will show up lighter. So if you are unsure if a color palette is going to have enough contrast, take a picture of it, pop it into your phone, and then turn it black and white. And then you can really see. If everything looks gray, you don't have enough contrast. But if you've got skeins that stand out as much darker or much lighter, then you've got good contrast. And this is especially helpful when you're picking palettes for color work. You want to have that contrast. Not always. Some people like low contrast color work and it can turn out absolutely beautiful. But a good rule of thumb is have a little contrast in there so that the color work pattern really pops out. Here's an example of that. This is my Daro B sock set. This is the Tristan socks. They were designed after an amazing sweater vest that Tristan wore in the show, All Creatures Great and Small on PBS. And you see, I've got this really dark blue in here that kind of pops. The red is darker than the cream and the pale pink. So we've got a lot of contrast and that really helps this pattern shine through. So this is a particularly good, good combination when you're looking for contrast. All right, I said I'd come back to pink and here we go. This is my seventh color combination recommendation. Just a beautiful classic pink mixed with classic red. You can't go wrong with this. If you're kind of stuck and you just want something simple, something striking, do red and pink. These are um, some slip stitch striped socks from my book, The Sock Project. You can find a link to that in the description below the video. And this is from my midwinter sock set, which you can find on Ravelry, my website. I'll have links to that in the video below as well. And I just used a really simple red and pink. The pink is dogwood heather from Knit Picks. It's their stroll line of sock yarn. And the red is also Knit Pick stroll in buoy. So pink and red can't go wrong, but if you want to add a little spice, let's build on that and let's add in what I call Grello. <laughs> I'm not sure what the exact name for this is, but it's just a really beautiful greenish yellow. This particular color is from Hedgehog Fibers. It's called Kelp. Um, I've got a lighter version here. This is from the Lemonade Shop. But yeah, you can see how pretty that is to just build on the pink, build on the red that you already have, add in this really beautiful greenish yellow, and it just creates a striking combination. I love this. I know I keep saying that, a striking combination. <laughs> they're all very striking. Um, you can tell I'm really passionate about color, and there are so many different ways that you can play off of it. Um, you can see in my Darobi sock set, I've got the pink and red, and we added in blues. And that also makes a great combination. If we're going to talk about color combination number eight, let's make, mix blues with golds, with pinks, and reds. I mean, it's pretty elementary. This is basically primary colors, red, blue, yellow, right? And we're just looking at different shades to kind of find the perfect combination. So red and pink mixed with a lighter blue and a darker blue mixed with a really pretty gold or a grayish, or I'm sorry, a greenish yellow. That creates a fantastic combination if you need a lot of colors for a project. If you're doing striped socks or color work socks like this, this is an absolutely fantastic palette. I love this. All right, for combination number nine, surprise, surprise, I've got pink again. <laughs> um, this is a really beautiful maroon. It's kind of just a sort of maroonish brick color combined with hot pink. Looks fantastic. Um, Again, this is a more serious color. This, you know, I would describe this as definitely like a grown up color. <laughs> um, and then you add in the fun hot pink. It's just a really nice surprise. Great two color combination there. But then you can swap out the pink and look how good lavender looks. I actually have a beautiful skein of lavender sock yarn. Have no idea what happened to it. Um, so, but this Surrey alpaca does the job. It kind of shows you trying to hide the pink, just shows you how fantastic lavender looks with maroon. So another great two color combination, um, add lavender, add lavender to your maroon. And that looks absolutely fantastic. It's really, really beautiful. 
for my final one, I've lost track of what I'm on. This might be 10, it might be 11, I don't know. I get really excited when I talk about color. <laughs> So I've lost track, but this is a more, this makes me think of a desert, honestly, the, this particular palette. I've shown you a lot of brights, a lot of neons, and I did wanna show, for those of you who like a more sedate, a more soft kind of color palette, this is stunning. This is an extremely pale peach. The color is literally like peach. These are all from Coats & Co. This color is called Saffron, and this is our nice minty green again. This is called Pistachio. So pairing, you've got your warm colors, your light peach, this beautiful saffron color. It's, you know, very much an orangey brown. And then you've got your cool color that you add in. You know, I've talked before about combining cool and warm colors together. This makes a great three color palette. This cool mint just adds such a beautiful pop of interest. I mean, on its own, this makes a great two color palette as well. But, oh gosh, and then look what happens when you add pink. See, now I'm just... <laughs> We're beyond 10 at this point, but yeah, look how great hot pink looks with the pale peach and the saffron. But then take it out. This is a little softer, a little more neutral. My hot pink is trying to roll back in here. So that looks fantastic as well. Really good, neutral, softer color palette for those of you who are like, look, I do not like neon. Quit shoving it in my face. <laughs> So anyways, this is either combination 10, 11, or 12. I don't know at this point, but <laughs> it looks really, really good together. I hope this video was helpful and you got some really good inspiration and ideas for selecting color palettes for your projects. If you'd like me to make more of these, just let me know in the comments. I am always happy <laughs> to talk about color as much as possible. So please let me know if this, if this was helpful and you want to see more videos like this where we talk about color and I show you different color combinations. I have a lot of you <laughs> in my stash, so I'm more than happy to dig it out, play with color combinations and kind of give you more inspiration and more ideas. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this and my weekly podcast, which drops every Friday, you can subscribe to my channel. You can give this video a thumbs up. You can find me on social media, on Instagram, my email, all of that will be in the description below the video. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.